Man, I miss you guys so much during the week. I love you very much. Those watching online, we're so glad that you're here with us on the internet. My name is Mike, and I just so happen to be the pastor here at this amazing church called Focus Church. And if you're here for the first time, just want you to do us one favor. That's to locate the purple U card in the seat back around you, and you could take that to the lobby today. We have a free gift to give you on your way out, and uh, we're so grateful that you've decided to worship with us today. Let's clap our hands for all of our first-time guests. Coming to church can be a risk, and we're glad that you made it today. It's my distinct honor and privilege to be able to welcome you on behalf of the staff and I. We're just glad that you decided to worship with us today. And uh, on your seats, you're going to see a This Is My Move envelope and This Is My Move commitment card. Go ahead and find one of those for me. I'm not going to ask you to put anything in it today, so don't get nervous. Some of you are like, I'm not touching that envelope. Don't worry. It's not today. But I'm going to ask that you would find one of these and that you would prayfully consider taking it home this week and asking God what you might give towards our year-end campaign called This Is My Move. And you can go to thisismymove.com. You can find out more details and information. But on December 13th, I'm asking that you would bring your best gift above and beyond your regular tithes and offerings to let the Lord know that he's still on the throne, to let the Lord know that he's still in charge, that all the resources that have come into your storehouse all belong to him, and you're going to give back above and beyond. And uh, you're going to see a testimony of what God has done uh, through your generosity at the end of today's service with our friends from Teen Challenge who are here today. But I just want to thank you for giving. Please take this home and prayfully consider what you and your family might do. And then uh, you can give at any time. December 13th is our special offering, but you can go ahead and give whenever the Lord leads you. If you say, hey, I need to give it now before I spend it on something stupid, you can go. Don't, don't let me stop you from writing that check, okay? Uh, you can go ahead and do that at any time, and you can go to thisismymove.com. But I just pray that you would prayfully consider joining us on this journey of movement towards God's design for our church and towards for our life and what, what he's doing in us and through us is just so incredible. If you have a copy of God's word, we're also going to be talking about movement today. How many of you know that it's one thing to move by yourself, but it's another thing to move in unison together? It's another thing to move in uh, I don't want to do this by myself. I want to do this with you. And if you weren't in it, I'm not doing it. And if you're not moving, I'm not moving. And uh, if my wife ever leaves me, I'm going with her. You know what I'm saying? She better not leave me. Coming up on 14 years of marriage. And uh, praise be to God. When I laid eyes on her when I was 12, it was awesome. So, so great. My daughter celebrated her birthday uh, yesterday, Ariana, my oldest. She just turned 13. I have a teenager now, and that is scary. And they had a sleepover, and uh, I left. So there was a lot of face mask, but not the face mask, like the, like the what, facial mask and uh, nails being done and uh, movies being watched. So you know what? I'm going to take uh, your brother, and we're going to go do something. So. That's what we did, but I'm very proud of you, proud of the woman of God that you're becoming and have become and the way that you lead uh, in the ministry, in the kids' ministry, in the worship ministry at 2020. Um, this is a family sport. This is a team sport and a family calling, and uh, I'm glad to have you on the team because I ain't doing this without you, and so I'm grateful for you. And uh, Mark chapter 4, Jesus is calling his disciples to move with him. He's saying, hey, we're not going to I'm not going to make you cross to the other side by yourself. We're going to do this together as a team. And when we bring our offering on December 3rd, it's not just one person giving. It's equal sacrifice across many people, many different demographics. And he's called us to move. Mark chapter 4, beginning in verse 35, it says, uh, That day, when evening came, therefore it's getting dark, uh, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Well, what is the other side? I don't know. When are we going to get there? I have no idea. It's like a family road trip with your father driving. I don't know when and I don't know where, but we're going to the other side. Are you grateful that we're going to get to the other side this year? I believe that 2021, we're going to be on the other side. We're going to be able to go to a restaurant without a mask between bites. Come on, somebody, get to the other side of this thing. We're going to be able to have church without restrictions in Jesus' name. We're going to be able to, to do things onto the other side. I believe that God is calling this church to the other side. The other side of, of lack is prosperity. The other, the other side of bondage is freedom. I believe that you're going to the other side in your marriage. You might be in a tough spot right now where the house is divided. There's tension and there's, there's angst. And I just pray that you would get to the other side of a, of a marriage that reflects God's design. 
that of the Garden of Eden, that of perfection, that of wholeness and holiness in Jesus' name. It says, let's go to the other side. I don't know about you, but I'm going to the other side. With or without you, hopefully with you, I'm going to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind. See, there are some people that won't be able to get to the other side with you. There are some people in the crowd that can't get to the other side. They haven't committed enough. They haven't been faithful enough. They haven't, they haven't gone through what you've gone through. Therefore, they can't make it through what you're trying to make it through. Some of you have been a part of the crowd for too long, and Jesus is calling you to the other side. They took him along just as he was in the boat. And there also other boats were with him. And a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat, and it was nearly swamped. Aren't you glad we serve a nearly God? He is near and he is early. Both of those words can be found in nearly. And you've nearly lost your mind this week, but God came to your rescue. You've nearly lost your child in that operating table, but God came to your rescue. You nearly lost your job, but God's faithfulness gave you a better job. You nearly lost your marriage. We serve a nearly God. He is near and he is early and he is always on time. And it nearly took them out, but it didn't. We serve a nearly God and a gnarly God. He's pretty cool too. He's nearly and he's gnarly. That's like a surfer term for you. Verse 38, Jesus was in the stern. What, was he, what could possibly the king of kings be doing? Such a busy man. He was sleeping. Not only was he sleeping, he's sleeping on a cushion. So it's like one thing to take a nap, and then there's another thing to take a nap on a cushion. Have you ever been prepared for a nap? Like, have you ever gotten ready for the nap that you're going to take? Like, that's me today after church, after preaching two times. Uh, I'm going to get into my favorite sweatpants. And I'm going to turn on something that is low volume, like a golf game, or sometimes NASCAR will do it to me because it's like all left turns. So I'll put on some NASCAR. It's good to watch whenever you wake up. You'll be like, oh, same thing. <laughs> I didn't miss much. <laughs> it's, they're still going in circles. Hundreds of circles left, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I get into nap mode. Have you ever been in nap mode before? Jesus is so in nap mode that he got a cushion. I mean, what kind of God do we serve that's like, you know what? I'm not only going to sleep, I'm going to sleep comfortably. And that's just a testament to what our God can do even in the middle of a storm. If he's able to rest, so can you. If he's able to rest on a cushion, if he's able to prioritize sleep, then maybe you need to do so. Because some of, some of this, for some of you, this year has taken it out of you. And you can't find rest. You can't find peace. And I just want to let you know, if a boat is being tossed to and fro in a storm and waves are breaking over the edges of the boat and it's taking on water, yet Jesus in the stern is able to sleep, not just sleep, but on a cushion, then you should be able to find rest in the chaos of this season, in the chaos of the holidays. And so I want you to know that Jesus is sleeping. So can you. It's okay to take a nap today. Not during the message, though. Those of you watching online from your couch, you are on a cushion. Don't you fall asleep. And the disciples woke him, these woke disciples, and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? If fear has crept into your life this year, may these words from Jesus, may these questions from Jesus echo into your soul as maybe fear has taken over you. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were terrified and they asked each other, who is this? <laughs> who is this? Who is this God we serve? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Father, we're headed to the other side. And in between now and then, in between here and there, there is a storm. And I don't know what the storm looks like for my brothers and sisters that are here at the sound of my voice, those that are watching online, but I just pray that we would know and confidently be able to say that we have Jesus with us. Therefore, the storm is subject to him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Have you ever been on a cruise? Ever, anybody go cruising? Pre-COVID cruise? Anybody? They're getting really cheap right now. In case you're looking to book a cruise, they're extremely affordable. In case you're looking to invest in some stocks 
and you have some money to throw at Royal Caribbean, now would be a good time. The stock is low, but I'm, I'm assuming that eventually, much like this church and much like everything else, we will recover. But it's good to buy low and to sell high. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever been on a cruise before? Anybody ever been on a cruise? In a cruise, um, they have an orientation, and uh, everyone has to line up and know this is where you go in case something goes on, and you're going to be right here in this row and this thing. And when you hear this sound and when you do this and do that, and they have orientation, everybody comes out. And then everyone gets divided up after that, and they go to their little uh, cabins. And how many of you know that there's definitely some classism going on in, in, a, in a cruise ship? Did you know that? You can pay more money to be in a different class on a cruise. In case you've never been on a cruise before, you can pay extra money to have a window, a window about this big. It's like several hundred dollars more, but you can be able to see outside the window. That's one level beneath the in. in then there's like rooms that are like closets on the inside, right? Have you, you ever been on a cruise before? Okay, so there's classism at, at stake. And then you could pay the mega bucks, the, the big money. I got some friends that like to cruise, and I know they, they, they go all out, and they get a balcony, right, where you can see the water. But you can feel the different classes uh, in, the, in the cruise ship whenever you start seeing, where are you staying at? And you're, like, embarrassed because <laughs> you're right by a bathroom, you know? It's like sitting in the back of an airplane. You're like, well, it's uh, 36F, you know, is my seat. What I love about Jesus is Jesus is in the bottom of the boat. His disciples are basically have the best view. He's sleeping in the bottom. Yet, though they were on top of the boat, they still had more fear than he had. And when you establish that there is another side for you, and when you're going through a storm, you need to know this, that there is no classism in the presence of a storm. Everyone becomes aware that it's their job to help out. And that's why I love this church, because as we go through what we would deem probably one of the toughest years in the life of a church in a long time, I'm so glad that we understand that there is no us and them, that there is no you and me, but instead we are one church. As a matter of fact, I'm so glad that we're all on the same boat. I'm so glad that we're on the same boat. Some of you come from different backgrounds. Some of you are different beliefs. Some of you might have voted differently, but that's okay. At this point, during this time, we're all on the same boat. We're all on the same boat. And you better be glad because I need you on this boat. And, and, and here's the deal. There's not an East Campus and an Apex Campus. It's all just one boat. There's not a, there's not a, a mask service and an unmasked service. It's all just one boat. And what I love about a diverse movement like this, as we go to the other side, as we ask God, God, what would you have for us at the other side? I love that we are one church on one boat. Some of you are like, what is he talking about? Is this Gilligan's Island Church or what? I'm just grateful that we can worship together, even though the minutia, the, the tiny things in life we might not all stand and agree on. And I've been fighting so hard this year to ensure that you know and I know that we are in this boat together. We're all in the same boat. I'm so grateful that we're all in the same boat. As a matter of fact, that's, that's my first uh, 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 observation is that we are all in the same boat. The storm is not selective. Everyone is going through this together. And I'm not going to let you drown if you're on my boat. You're coming with me. I'm not going to let this church go under. I'm not going to let your marriage fail. I'm not going to let you lose your job and call it quits. I'm not going to let you be reliant on that medication for the rest of your life. Why? Because we're all on the same boat. And when you suffer, I suffer. And when you hurt, I hurt. And when you're in pain, I'm in pain. And the call of the pastor is to ensure that everyone on the boat experiences the goodness and the grace of God. We're on the same boat, and we're in a boat together. And as we're in this boat, I want to let you know we're going to the other side. I don't know where the other side is, and I don't know when the storm is going to be over, but we are all in the same boat. So when you lift your hands and you look across your row and someone doesn't look like you, guess what? Same boat. Same God. When you drop your kids off and you see some kids dressed this way and some kids dressed that way, same boat. Same God. When, you, when you're able to bring your best gift on December 13th and someone else is able to give, give more amount than you, it's the different amount, but it's the same sacrifice. Let me explain something to you. $100 to some 
in the year-end offering will be everything that they have, while, while $10,000 to others will be the sacrifice. It's the equal sacrifice, not equal amount on December 13th. So do not think that we are classifying people based on the amount. We are looking for people to give sacrificially. Because what? We're all in the same boat. We're all in the same boat. We're all, we're all on the same cruise ship. I don't care if you've got a, a window with a balcony or a room with a window or you're near the kitchen. It doesn't matter to me because there's not an us and a them on this ship. There is no class. But instead, we're all in the same boat. And here's what I know. This boat is better because of you. It's bo this boat's better because of you. When you are in this church, this church is better because of you. Miss Carol, this boat is better because of you, and I'm grateful for you. Angie, this boat is better because of you. I'm grateful for you. James, this boat is better because of you. Mike, this boat is better because of you. This boat is better because of you that are watching online. Grateful for you. This boat is you make this boat what it is. Did you know that if you don't come to this church, it ain't the same boat? It's true. When I was preaching to an empty boat, whoo boy, are they with me or not? Crickets. It's depressing being on the boat all by yourself. No one wants to be on a boat by themselves. A cruise is only fun because of the people that you're with. Why? Because you make this boat better. When you serve in kids' ministry, you make this boat better. When you serve on the worship team, you make this boat better. When you give of your resources, you make this boat better. Better, Osa, you make this boat better. When you smile and I see you smile and you and Joseph smile, you make this boat better. You've made this boat better for many years and I'm grateful for it. Thank you for making this boat what it is. Those of you that are new to this church, you're making this boat better. Let me tell you right now, every time you come to party with the pastor and attend Serve 101, every time you grab one of these cards in the seat back in front of you and you, you scan that QR code and you go to igettoserve.com, you're saying, I'm going to make this boat better. Mike and Paola, you make this boat better. Wesley Tyson and your memes, you make my Facebook feed better. He's a meme king. If you don't know what a meme is, just Google it later. But thank you for making those the shareable memes. I'm so grateful for that. Keeps me sane during quarantine. There are people in your life that make your boat better. My question to you is, are you making someone else's boat better? When you go to your family's Thanksgiving feast or Maybe you're doing it virtually this year. I'm not sure how you're going to celebrate, but I want to encourage you to make their boat better. Maybe help out a little bit. Maybe compliment that second cousin that you hate. Maybe compliment something about their outfit. Make their boat better. Maybe take the kids outside so that they're not running around the house stuck to their iPads. Make the boat better. And I'm not talking about the gravy boat. Some of you are like, I make that boat better. I'm going to eat all the gravy in the gravy boat. What you are called to do, what we are called to do, is to make every boat that we are in better. Terrence, you make this boat better, and I'm grateful for you. Thank you for playing those drums like it's the last time you'll ever play those drums. You make the boat better. It's our job to serve in the church and to make the boat better, but the boat really doesn't matter if we don't get to my next observation, which is Jesus is in our boat. I know it's very simple, but sometimes we forget that the presence of the storm does not indicate the absence of God and that Jesus is in our boat. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go anywhere where Jesus is not. I don't want to go anywhere or take any steps that Jesus is not there. I've been outside of the will of God, and it's no fun place to be. I've been outside of the will of God during my teenage years, rebellious towards my parents, rebellious towards the will of God, rebellious towards the church, and it's not a fun place to be. I don't know if you've ever been there before, but being on a boat without Jesus leaves you no hope during the storm. It leaves you no hope. And when you have no hope, you don't know where the other side is, and you don't know when the storm is going to end. But Jesus is in this boat. When you come to church here, when you attend church online, you are able to be in the presence of an almighty God. And that presence of an almighty God allows him to speak to the storms that you're going to. Why did you come to church today? 
because you know that the storm that you're in needs the Jesus that is in your boat. And when he looks at the wind and when he looks at the waves, he can say, peace, be still. And the winds and the waves can obey him. Aren't you grateful for a church that prioritizes Jesus being here? Like, I don't know about you, but I don't want it to be about anything else. I don't want to get ahead of Jesus. I don't want to get behind Jesus. I, don't want, to, I, I want to be right in the center of the will of God for this church. And it's tough, man. When do we open? What do we do? How do we regulate? Do this, do that. All I want to do is what Jesus tells us to do. And if it says goes to, go to the other side, then we're going to go to the other side. If he says get in the boat, let's go to the other side, then we're going to do that. And if a storm comes, it's not going to surprise him. Why? Because he's asleep. Did you know nothing that has happened this year has caught God off guard? He hasn't taken one time and woken up and be like, oh, my, a global pandemic. Oh, I never would have thought of that. An election year? Oh. Tensions in the home? God does not wake up surprised in the morning about what you're going through. Therefore, you can remain confident in this, that if Jesus is in your boat, then he could speak to the storm, whatever you're going through, and he will, he will ensure that peace comes in the midst of the chaos. I'm grateful that Jesus is in this boat, and I don't ever want to move this thing without Jesus in it. It says that there were other boats around them, but there was only one boat with Jesus in it, and that was the boat that the disciples were in. And I don't know about you, but I can do, I can do without a lot of things. I can do without sports. I could do without, without uh, good, good meals. I could do without a lot of fun activities. I could do without a lot, but what I cannot do without is I cannot do anything without Jesus. I don't know what you've prioritized this year. I don't know what has become your king this year, but Jesus should be your king and will be my king. And I don't know about you. I just want to be in the center of God's will. And it's tough sometimes to find God's will. It's been tough. Has it been tough for you trying to figure out how to connect to the internet and get your kid online and get in there? You know? It's been tough to figure out how to grocery shop when there's arrows on the ground. I don't know. I'm confused. Can I get, I'm looking down the aisle, make sure I don't go counter the arrow. God forbid you go down the up arrow or up the down arrow. I'm ready to get to the other side. Are you ready to get to the other side? Man, I'm ready to get to the other side. But I'm only going to the other side if Jesus is in the boat. The last thing is this, is that the storm falls subject to Jesus. I don't know what storm that you're in. I'm convinced that there's more depression and anxiety and fear than ever before, at least present right now. And I just want you to know that Jesus is present in that. I, I, I know that it can be hard to articulate the pain and suffering that you are going through. But when Jesus is in the boat, everything must obey him. It's got to obey him. Your addiction has to obey him. Your anxiety has to obey him. Your marriage and the chaos and the dysfunction has to obey Jesus. So once he's in your boat, you know you're going to make it to the other side. And I just don't ever want to live a life without Jesus. And I hope that you don't either. I hope that you don't take the storm into your own hands. Have you ever tried to take a situation into your own hands, knowing farewell that that was not going to work out for you? But in the moment, you felt like that was your only option was for you to control the situation, was for you to predict the outcome. See, the thing is, we try to, do, we try to predict the outcome by controlling a situation, but outcome belongs to the Lord. The other side belongs to Jesus. Obedience to get in the boat is our job. Outcome to get to the other side and to calm the winds and the waves is up to God. And so when obedience is up to me, but outcome is up to God, then I know that whether a storm comes or not, I can, in turn, trust him throughout the entire process. Where are you not trusting God right now? If he's asleep on the bottom of the boat, rest assured you're going to make it to the other side. 
I was reading about buffalo. And the difference between a buffalo and cattle, I know it's weird, right? You're like, what does he do all week? <laughs> Is that his job? He does that for a living? Read about buffalo? Yeah. Buffalo have developed the thickest eyelids in the, in the animal species. They have thick eyelids. Not eyelashes like some of you ladies sell on Facebook. I'm not talking about that. Those gluons. Y'all know what I'm talking about? The ladies with the eyelashes? You know, an opportunity for you to make additional income at home, work from home. I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. They have strong eyelids. I was like, why does a buffalo have strong eyelids? Buffalo are the only animals that run into a storm and not away from it. They have figured out that the time that the storm will last will be shorter if they run through it instead of running from it. If you put buffalo and cattle side by side and wind and, and clouds come over the horizon, you'll see them go in two separate directions. The buffalo are going to turn and run into the dark clouds and into the wind and into the storm. Therefore, they've developed strong eyelids so that they can run through the debris and all the mess that comes with the storm. But cows, they get scared of the storm and they run away from the storm. The issue is, is that what the, the cows are doing is they are prolonging the inevitable that they cannot outrun while the buffalo are saying, we're going to take the storm head on and charge through so that it will last shorter instead of last longer for us. And I wonder how many people here are not like the buffalo, but instead are running from the very storm that Jesus wants to take you through. And you are simply prolonging the will of God on your life because you are running from something that Jesus wants to strengthen you through. I wonder how many buffalo, though, that we have, that when the fire does come, when the storm does come, when the winds do rage and when the waves come over the top, that you say, you know what? I got Jesus on this boat. He's told me to go to the other side, so the gates of hell will not prevail against me. I'm going to charge the storm, and therefore I'm going to be known to run into the storm and not away from it, because even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. We need to establish herd community. Y'all thought I was going to say herd immunity. My voice just cracked. We need to establish herd community. This means that when you're going through a storm, we're going to lock arms and we're going to put our faces down and we're going to charge towards that storm. When you come to this church, we ain't running from your problems. When you come to this church, we're not running from your dysfunction. When you come to this church, we want to lock arms with you and get you through the storm. Peace be still. And they said, whoa, even the winds and the waves obey him. Jesus said so himself. He said, in this world, you will have trouble. Not you might, not maybe, not if things don't work out, possibly. He said, you will. Almost guaranteed trouble. What a God we serve. You will have trouble. I thought you were loving and compassionate and protect me from everything. No, you will have trouble. But then he says, take heart. For I, Jesus speaking, have overcome the world. Aren't you grateful that we can charge through the storm? We can develop a strong sense of knowing we can go right through. That's what I love about this church. I love it because I'm stronger with you in my boat. And Jesus is here. And so I don't know what the storm that you're facing. This week, you probably got a lot of questions and a lot of, like, should we go over for dinner? Should we try to fight that? You know, you got stepmom and stepdad and complicated blended family dynamics. Listen, I want you to know we're going to get through it. Don't run away from the trouble. Take heart. The family dynamics that you're about to face on Thanksgiving, I'm praying for you. 
not only am I praying for you, but I'm here for you, man. Let's lock arms. Let's go through this storm together. Some of you haven't spoken to family members in a long time, and you're going to confront them. You're going to be on the other side of the table with them. And I want to encourage you, man, make the boat better. Don't make it worse. Make the boat better. Don't make it worse this week. What could you do to make your family's boat better? Do that. Rake your mother-in-law's leaves. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself. <laughs> Help with the dishes as they are in abundance. I know that there are three football games on back to back to back. Trust me, I've already checked. But the really only good one is the last one. Who cares about the Dallas Cowboys? That's just a joke. That's a joke. I got people watching online that are like, revoke, revoke the tithe, remove it, get, get it, refund my tithe. I want you to run through the storm and gain strength. The righteous run to him and they are strengthened. A mighty fortress is our God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. I know that there are people at the sound of my voice that do not know you and that need salvation. They need you to get in their boat because they're going through a storm right now. And I just pray for them. If that's you today and you say, I, I need Jesus in my life. I need Jesus in my boat. I've never been saved and I want to be rescued. If that's you today, would you just shoot your hand up in the air? Would you just shoot your hand up in the air right now? Shoot your hand up in the air right now. I need Jesus in my boat. I need Jesus in my boat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Repeat after me for the sake of those who just said that prayer. Say, Father God, I give my life to you. Thank you for speaking to the wind and the waves. Thank you for being in my boat. I give my life to you. I repent of my sins in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for God's word today.